Of all the African rebellions against colonial domination, the Mau Mau uprising can be described as the bloodiest and most legendary. The war of the guerrilla fighters against the British settlers leaves behind a dark myth in Kenya around a coic ritual, the revenge of the oppressed and a merciless and uncompromising colonial apparatus. It resembles a battle of David against Goliath. In 1952, the exploited Mau Mau, a kind of bush gorilla with machetes, magical rituals and extraordinary fury rebel against one of the largest and most modern armies of its time, the British Empire. And even though the partly radicalized Kenyans were brutally put down, they were able to achieve the beginning of the end of the British Africa. But how did it come to this? Who were the Mau Mau and how did they hold out for so long against the overpowering British colonial troops? Kenya in the 1950s resembles a powder keg. The British Empire has to say goodbye to more and more colonies around the world. India, Pakistan and Palestine have already been lost and now with Nkrumah, the African country of Ghana, it's also striving for independence. A new era is dawning, but who should own Kenya in the future? Probably not the locals. The British, who declared region between Lake Victoria and the Indian Ocean a protectorate in 1895, expelled the Kikuyu, Kamba and Maasai people into reserves on the justification that they would not develop the land and would stand on the way of their own progress. The Europeans in Kenya want to turn the country into a settler state like South Africa. In 1948, some 30,000 whites were living in luxury on the fertile Kenyan land of the dispossessed locals against 6 million natives. In Europe, the white settlers in Kenya are known for their extravagant and luxurious lifestyle. Not for nothing did the highlands around Nairobi become known as Happy Valley. Happy here were only the white invaders. The locals who inherited the land from generation to generation were not only dispossessed but driven into poverty. They had no choice but to work as slaves or so-called squatters for the thieves who robbed them of the land. The mood became increasingly angry among the locals. The social impoverishment, the humiliation, the exploitation, the destruction of family structures through expulsion and the threat of spreading Christianity led to a growing aggression that soon could not longer be contained. However, their hatred was not only directed against the white settlers. No, it was also directed against the collaborators, the small privileged class of wealthy Kenyans who profited from the exploitation of their own people. But how were the oppressed people to defend themselves against the superiority of the British exploiters and their supporters. In fact, there was already an association that stood up for the rights of the locals, the Kenya African Union, and the demands of this party are comparatively moderate. Under their leader, Jomo Kenyatta, they demand negotiations with the British for an end to discrimination, the return of the stolen land, and political representation, all on a peaceful basis. But the British see the Africans as subhuman, incapable of self-government, and who must be ruled by the Europeans for their own good. Now another movement formed within the KAU, much more radical, which realized that cooperation on an equal level with the exploiters is not possible. The Mau Mau. Its members demand an end to oppression. In order to achieve this, they are counting on bloody revenge. Many Kenyans who had to fight alongside the British army in the Second World War brought a certain strategic know-how with them to help them plan their rebellion. In addition, the main ethnic group living in the highlands of Kenya, the Kikuyu, revived the ancient tradition of the oath ceremony. A mysterious oath was said to produce invincible spirit warriors. The ceremonies were held in secret. Those who resist are forced to do so. The those present throw everything European they own into the fire, drink from pumpkins filled with animal blood and bite into the hearts and lungs of freshly slaughtered animals. The blatant taboo breaking is meant to underline the need for secrecy and create a sense of community among the insiders. In 1950, the colonial administration reacts by banning the illegal organization of the Mau Mau. However, the British representation in Kenya proved particularly incompetent and sloppy during this period. In secret, more and more Kenyans take the oath and radicalize themselves. The new governor, Evelyn Baring, in the country tries to control the situation, but the young descendant of a rich banking dynasty is only on a superficial level familiar with the situation in the country and makes a fatal decision, which is now the spark that finally causes the situation to tip over. Bering declares a state of emergency and has the moderate and pacifist Kenyatta imprisoned in the autumn of 1952. Unintentionally, he not only breaks the camel's back, but also makes Kenyatta the symbol of the freedom movement. The revolt escalates 
the Mau Mau variant stormed British institutions and shot white settler families. They round up 30 policemen in a house and set it on fire. They are aware of their military inferiority, so they use guerrilla tactics. They set ambushes, often strike at night, attack smaller groups of the colonial army and avoid open battle. The ghost warriors set up their bases in the forest, led by the radical Dedan Kimati. But even though the hatred is focused on the whites, the black population is not safe from the attacks either. Those who do not declare their allegiance to the Mau Mau are threatened, attacked, considered traitors and brutally punished. In fact, many more locals fall victim to violence than settlers. But in Europe, only pictures of murdered whites are shown. This kind of one-sided reporting leads to the fact that even decades later, the Mau Mau uprising was misused as a warning against the violence of the black man. What do the British do now? They respond with ruthless violence. They in turn an estimated 150,000 people, mostly Kikuyu, civilians in camps. Here they are subjected to terrible conditions. Many are tortured and raped. The British send in troops from the other colonies and bomb the Mau Mau camps from planes. The mechanized army of a huge empire and the poorly armed Bush warriors fight an unequal battle. In 1956, Mau Mau leader Dedan Kimati is captured and hanged by the colonial government a few months later. After four years, the uprising is crushed. Tens of thousands of Africans and 95 Europeans were murdered during this time. Time. Hundreds of thousands, some estimate as many as 1.5 million indigenous people were locked up in camps by the British during this period. The reactions to the publicized brutality with which the British acted against those locked up here meant that the colonial power could not hold on to its colony for much longer after all. Kenya became independent in 1936. The first president was Jomo Kenyatta, who had been released from prison. Kenyatta's motto of Harambe, which can be translated to we all achieved independence together and for give and forget, ignores the bloody struggle and the many victims that the fight for independence demanded and rather seeks harmony with the former exploiters. Many resistance fighters therefore accuse him of opportunism and spinelessness. His own financial independence was probably more important to him than Kenyan independence. It is not without reason that the Kenyattas are still one of the richest families in Kenya. As a puppet of the West, Kenyatta dashed the hopes of many Mau Mau in the aftermath of independence. They had hoped to get back the land that had been stolen, but they had to buy it. Generously, the government provided loans to the farmers, which in turn were financed by the British. Thus, more than half of the once confiscated land did not go to the Kenyan farmers, but to the African elite. The legacy of the Mau Mau remains the plaything of ideologies. Their history is sometimes demonized, sometimes mythologized. But it is safe to say that the Mau Mau showed that people power should not be underestimated. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more history content or click directly here if you are interested in African freedom fighters.